Once you open Premiere, Premier, the first thing you'll want to do is just create a new project. You can use the default settings there. Um, once you've done that, let's size that to fit. You want to go to Window and choose the option here just to show all panels, which is actually what this is already set to. Um, these workspaces dictate which um, modules and components you can see. So for instance, this would be the color editing workspace, but we just want all panels as our workspace. So you'll see here, there's this rectangular box, um, which just says in the media browser that says import media to start. So the way I like to go about that is I just take all the pieces I'm gonna use, I have these three clips, I just drag them all in there. And then I can do everything else straight in Premiere from here on out. Now that you have your media imported, you can simply drag it over into here. And start working with your tracks. We're going to start that. So once you have your media in the tray, you can simply drag the videos over here and it will start to create tracks. So here we have video 1, 2, 3 and audio 2, 1, 2 and 3. Um, if you're working with more than three videos, you can go to the sequence menu and add as many video tracks as you like. Um, we, I only need three right now. So I'll start dragging my other tracks in. So I can already see my tracks are different lengths, so I will need to do some trimming. Um, I'm not going to use any audio for this, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete this waveform here. Um, you can always record new audio by hitting the microphones, but that's not really relevant to this assignment. Um, before I get into any sort of trimming and editing, I want to get these set up into a triptych. Now to do that, I simply select one of the videos. I've selected the one in track one. Now I'm going to open effects control here. Now we have position and scale here. You can either type in values or you can actually hover. You can see when I hover over this number, the mouse turns into a little hand with arrows and I can click and just drag left to right. Or I can put in a number. Now you notice that it seemed like nothing happened there. And that's because just like layers in Photoshop, um, these two videos are on top of the one I was editing. So I can use this little eye and hide those. And now I can actually see the video I'm working on. And there it goes scaling in and out. So I guess I want to scale it to about 30, 33%, depending on whether I want this to be seamless or have black bars in between it. I'm just going to go with 33 for now. And then I can click and drag on this number and slide that right over to the side. Now I'll go to the top video, which should be on the right side, and I will scale that down to 50%. And then I'll click on this number, sorry, I meant 33%, and then I'll click on the number and drag and slide that one over. Now the middle video, I will set also to 33% and I shouldn't need to move it. So there we go, we have a basic triptych set up. If you have other things in mind. You can also pull this number to raise or lower videos if you want some sort of design going on there. Also, um, there should actually be rotation here. Oh, here that is. So if your videos are um, vertically oriented, you can rotate them this way. So you can just rotate them 90 degrees. And I believe that if you have vertical videos, you can 
get a size of more like 55% rather than 33. So do keep in mind that if you work with a vertical format videos, um, or you can even do something like this with a vertical video in the middle and smaller ones on the side, anything goes. Um, but if you work with vertical format videos, you will be able to use more of the pixel real estate of your screen or projector or whatever. So having set up my three images in the arrangement I want, I now can edit the time. Here you can see we have our timelines. Um, I can turn the eye on and off just to remind me which one is which. Um, so you can see the first clip is longer and the last clip is a bit shorter. Um, that's generally the way you should shoot it. You should always put extra time on the first clip to make sure you don't have to extend anything because that can be a real pain. Um, when I play this through, um, and I'm not going to play the whole thing, I can already see with this first transition, someone's going to come down the stairs here. And then they walk through, and the next person comes right out. So that looks great. The next transition also looks pretty good. Let me just double check that. So if I wanted to tweak it, um, it looks like things are pretty close. What I would do is I would take all these timelines and shift them away from the beginning. This just gives me a little space to wiggle them around. They don't like going past the beginning. You can see it stops there. Um, so my first pattern through looked good. Here, I'm gonna watch the figure go through. And it does come through just about right. Um, if it didn't, what I could do um, is push this first timeline back a tiny bit. And now you can see I've made it worse, but I've changed it. Um, to edit this with more detail, you can slide this thing down here um, the slider, the middle of it goes back and forth, and these ends will change the magnification of your timeline. So I'm lining up, so just as my first person leaves, just moving this in tiny little increments. So now I've actually created this where her back can be his back, so really tight. Um, and I did move it a little bit to do that. Um, if I were presenting this piece, I think the timing was close enough already. I don't think that this was necessary to make this edit here, but I want to show how you can slide the clips to change how your um, frames align with each other. So now I'm using this trim tool to match the beginning of all the clips, and I will slide these all back to the beginning of the timeline. It's important that your clips go right to the beginning of the timeline, otherwise you'll have black. Um, your whole screen will be black at the beginning and end of your loop. Um, if I play this and I drag it along, you can see that as tracks disappear, this whole thing turns black. I also see, I didn't notice this before, but towards the end of the clip, this person lingers back in a little. So we want to take that out too. So I'm going to move the play line. Let's make sure everything's going through properly. So our main figure is left, and I just have to wait for the figure in the middle to get back to her starting place. And here she comes. And once she's back lurking in the shadow again, I can stop it here. Um, 
And the reason I want to stop it here is I, for this I want the loop to get started again um, relatively quickly, so I don't need this extra time. Um, the most important thing though is that your clips are all the same length. So now that I've found my point where I want to stop it, I'm simply going to use this trim tool again, just clicking at the end of the clips and dragging, and you can see that it will snap, which means when you get close to the line, it'll just lock right in with it. So now, I'm just going to do a quick preview of things, and it looks good. Um, the next step is simply to export, and for that, I'll just go to File, Export, Media. Your export settings, you want to go to the first setting here and set it to H264. You want to set your output name, which should just be your name. And um, down here we have a few more settings. So by default, your video is set to match the source video you started with, which in this case was 1080p which is fine um, if you were using higher resolution videos or something like that or lower resolution you do want your overall frame to be 1080p so that means 1080 by 1920 so you can put that in manually here i can uncheck this box and I'm just writing 1080 which happens to be what it defaulted to anyway and because this link is clicked it's going to put the other dimension in automatically um, so as long as you're 1080 P for the height, export video, yes, export audio is optional if you want to include audio, and then format H.264, that's crucial, that's the format you should have. If you export them as just standard MOV files, your files will be enormous and they won't play very well on the projector in class. So once those settings are picked, you just hit export, and you can see this is going to take for this one a minute and 30 seconds.